In this video, I'll address complex concepts expressed by Kiyosaki, the author of the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. One concept that caused perplexity was the assertion that wealth is built by accumulating debt. He expressed this at the beginning of one of his talks. Rich Dad taught me to appreciate debts while people advise avoiding them. I encourage taking them on to achieve wealth. Kiyosaki contends that the wealthy hold wealth through many debts. However, in the lecture, he overlooked detailing this concept, leaving people perplexed. In America, people incur debts to appear rich rather than actually being rich. There's a distinction between appearing rich and being rich. One can acquire a car and a luxurious residence through financing to create an appearance of prosperity, but in reality, the only consequence is the accumulation of debts. I collaborate to educate people about finances, money, and investments. If you aim to achieve financial freedom and accumulate a large amount of money, subscribe to the channel and enjoy the video. If you find it useful, we have also recorded a series of videos where we share valuable strategies for anyone to move from absolute zero to wealth in six months. There are three completely free videos and the links will be in the first pinned comment. Let's return to our main subject, rich debt and poor debt. The discrepancy lies in the type of debt people incur. There is a category of debt that can drive prosperity and another that can lead to decline. During the lecture, Kiyosaki revealed having hundreds of thousands of dollars in debts which belong to his companies. Kiyosaki advocates for the existence of detrimental debts and beneficial debts. Debts are detrimental when used to acquire assets that impoverish the individual. Indebtedness through installments or credit cards results in impoverishment when buying consumer products with interest and charges, making the acquisition more expensive than if it were made in cash. This also applies to the acquisition of cars for personal use and homes for residents, or any asset that incurs ongoing expenses after purchase. Cars and homes generate constant expenses, so the debt incurred to acquire a liability leads to impoverishment. Simplistically, a liability is anything that recurrently takes money away. They are things that depreciate over time or generate regular expenses. Beneficial debts are those that lead to prosperity, that is, debts that enable the acquisition of assets or goods that generate income over time. According to Kiyosaki, the wealthy spend their lives incurring debts to acquire assets. I'll present some examples. The rich obtain loans to acquire or establish businesses. These businesses generate enough income to cover the debt's interest and charges, in addition to remunerating the entrepreneur. A business owner can take on debts to acquire a machine that will increase profits, justifying the payment of interest. Wealthy individuals with property debts. A debt can be used to acquire a property, such as an office, warehouse, store, or other rental properties for long periods. Debt can be employed in constructing a property, like a set of small shops, a village of houses, commercial spaces, a housing development, or any real estate venture prone to appreciation. An example would be someone who acquired dozens of lots in a famous housing development where high-end residences are usually built. To buy these lots, this person only needed to pay a small down payment for each one. They were marketed even before the start of the development using a bank loan, offering another property that was paid off as collateral. This person did not use their own capital to obtain dozens of lots. The down payment was made with borrowed money from the bank and the remainder was financed by the construction company that owned the development. Over time, this person sold the lots to interested parties and established partnerships with small engineering companies and architects specialized in building luxury homes. Instead of selling the lot through these partnerships, they could also market the lot with an already built luxury house. This is just an example of how it is possible to profit through debts in the real estate market. Small ventures in this scenario do not require large sums. A modest individual could acquire a hot dog cart, churros, 
popcorn or barbecue through financing, this cart could be turned into a new enterprise capable of generating the necessary revenue to cover the debt's interest. The same person could acquire a second cart and establish ten carts with employees at different locations in the city. A small entrepreneur could launch new restaurants through loans. A real estate entrepreneur could acquire a well-located property, convert it into a restaurant through financing, and rent the property for several years to a renowned restaurant owner in the city. As Kiyosaki prospered with debts and real estate, he favors real estate investments through debts as a path to wealth. He often uses his own fully paid properties as collateral to obtain bank loans with reduced interest rates. We know that banks offer lower rates when a good can be offered as a payment guarantee. This good can be taken and auctioned off by the bank easily in case of default. This greater security in the face of potential non-payment results in lower interest rates, that is, money at reduced cost. Kiyosaki has shared examples where he had a $100,000 property and could easily borrow $300,000 at 3% interest per year through banking institutions. With these borrowed $300,000, Kiyosaki could acquire other income-generating properties through rentals. In this way, he would not need to acquire these properties entirely up front, being able to use those dollars to make down payments on several properties, further increasing the debts. For instance, he could make a $100,000 down payment, and with that, acquire 10 new financed properties with the $300,000 obtained. The income from renting out these properties would suffice to pay off the financial debt. In this sense, other people work to pay off the installments and charges linked to the debt that Kiyosaki incurred with banking institutions. Just having several lease contracts would enable obtaining additional amounts through loans, which would convert into more properties to rent out. His wife, Kim, made her first investment decades ago, adopting this strategy. She acquired a $25,000 property, only spending $5,000 of her own resources. Thus, she took on a $20,000 debt, which the tenant paid, and with these funds, she could meet the installments. Only $5 remained per month. However, she was not using her own funds to pay off the $20,000 debt. It was the tenant who was effectively fulfilling that role. She only took $5,000 out of her own pocket. If there were a savings account in the United States, that would be the equivalent of what she would receive monthly. Considering the $5,000 were accumulating interest at 0.5% per month. However, in the United States... 1.25% is what people annually obtain in conservative investments. For her, the crucial aspect was that after a few years, she would have a fully paid property in her name, thanks to the hard work of various tenants who passed through the residence. The same tactic was employed by her to make million-dollar investments. During the lecture, Kiyosaki mentioned that his wife owned several hotels following this strategy of investing through borrowing frequently. What a small hotel room generates in revenue over a weekend is equivalent to what we could obtain in a whole month from a leased residential property. Currently, there are platforms like Airbnb where anyone can rent a property or part of it for a season, not necessarily for a month. Before replicating this model, it's essential to understand that investments involving debts carry a higher risk. Losing your own money in an investment is an inconvenience. Losing someone else's money in an investment is a duplicated setback. There's nothing inadequate about making risky investments, but to do so, one must learn to manage risks. We are in the United States. Nonetheless, individuals like Kiyosaki often rely on the services of accountants and consultants who make calculations and assess the economic and legal viability of ideas before they're implemented. People like him also rely on lawyers who examine and draft contracts and property documents before acquiring, financing, and renting. In the context of real estate investments, 
it's common for the true investor to maintain closer proximity to one or several real estate agencies. The advantageous opportunities that arise in this market are not advertised on the internet or on real estate agency websites. All real estate agencies keep in touch with investors. When I mention investors, I refer to people who have financial resources or the ability to obtain immediate debts to take advantage of a favorable opportunity. When an attractive opportunity arises, real estate agencies contact these investors even before starting any online promotion. Promising deals are closed within hours or a few days. When the property is advertised on the internet, it indicates that neither the real estate agency owner nor their acquaintances, partners, and investor clients have shown interest in the deal. Only at that moment does the opportunity become public. Rest assured that individuals like Kiyosaki don't seek opportunities where the general public looks. He receives calls from real estate agencies and even from lawyers who are aware of the opportunities that arise in the real estate business world. The sales effort is inversely proportional to the value of the deal. Real estate deals are completely finalized in a few hours through a simple call. Closing less attractive deals during lunches, dinners and events demands significant marketing and sales efforts to attract the general public. Now let's talk a little about the American reality. It's crucial to note that the reality of interest rates in the United States for those intending to undertake, start a business, acquire machinery, buy or build a property to generate revenue is completely different from the American reality, especially if involving other people's money. The U.S. still ranks among the countries with the highest real interest rates, and the political, financial, and economic environment is not favorable. In the United States and Europe, the basic interest rates in the economy are lower than inflation. Since interest rates are low and money loses value, there's nothing better than having debts, as the return on safer and more conservative investments is reduced. The pursuit of higher risk investments becomes a matter of survival. A European bank would have no profitability if it lent money to the government at a 0% rate. A Swiss bank would have to pay to lend money to the government. For these institutions, it's more advantageous to lend that money to anyone who can prove their repayment ability. Any rate above zero and higher than inflation is considered good for these banks. Those who benefit from this are entrepreneurs and investors willing to obtain money at a low cost to undertake or invest with greater risk. Property owners, businessmen, or anyone who can prove repayment ability or offer some asset as collateral ultimately manage to get money at a low cost to invest and undertake. In countries where interest rates are low, this environment is extremely conducive to real estate investments and higher risk ventures using other people's money. Observe how unfavorable it is to see the US at the top of the list, along with countries like Venezuela, Russia, Egypt and Iran. We are among the worst countries in the world to incur debt since the basic interest rate above inflation is one of the highest. This also positions the U.S. as one of the best places to make low-risk fixed-income investments. Undertaking in the U.S. is a task for a few. Thus, enriching through debts is feasible in the U.S. by undertaking or making revenue-generating investments with money obtained through loans. We face a problem. Challenges are greater compared to abroad, where interest rates are low. The legal system is more favorable for entrepreneurs. The political system is more stable and less corrupt. In the U.S., undertaking and investing through debts require more preparation and study in the face of elevated risks. America is not a country for amateur investors and entrepreneurs. Here, one must become a professional. If you stayed till the end of this video, I'd really like to know. Comment, this is how you get rich by making debts. When I see this comment, I'll know that you stayed until the end, and I'll give your comment a little heart. Now further enhance your knowledge. Learn how to get rich quickly by clicking on the video that's appearing on your screen. Go watch it now.